Hello again, this is Dr. Nunez with Living Health. This is a series of videos on lifestyle, how lifestyle can impact your health and your sense of well-being. And it's many different components and what goes into a healthy lifestyle for healthy living. If you like these kinds of videos, please press subscribe, press the thumbs up button, press the little bell so you can get notified of new videos as they come up. We've been talking about in these last few videos on weight loss and nutrition. And I wanna to add to that the component of sleep, how sleep relates to a healthy lifestyle, and in fact, how sleep deficiency, sleep deprivation can contribute to an increased risk of obesity. I'll link below to some tips on sleep from Harvard, from the School of Public Health, and we'll go over some of the points on, on sleep. I'm often asked, well, I can't sleep very well, Doc. Well, what should I do? What can I do? There are several things that you could do in the course of your day to help you improve uh, your sleep at night. One thing to do is to avoid naps during the day. Another important thing is if you're drinking caffeine or stimulants or things that say energy boost, uh, you might wanna avoid those. Uh, or limit them at least to the morning hours. So you're having your uh, coffee or your green tea or your uh, morning tea in the morning where uh, the caffeine and the stimulating effects won't last into the evenings. What else can you do? Physical activity, exercise. If you exercise at least two or three times a week, maybe as long as an hour, that can contribute to helping you sleep. So you should sleep, the exercise, you should try to do it during the daytime so that it's not too close to your bedtime. You want to probably avoid within two hours of bedtime any uh, st strenuous exercise because that can keep you up. So try to sleep during, try to, try to exercise during the day to improve sleep at night. And exercise could be something as simple as just uh, some walking, brisk walking. Uh, if you're like cycling, swimming, if you're up north and, and cold weather, you can do some exercises indoors. The other thing to try to do is get bright light during the day. So in your morning hours when you're awake, if you get exposed to brighter light, daylight, that can help. So if you're indoors, you have to be careful that you are exposing yourself to bright light during the day, especially the morning hours. Now, as the, as the day progresses and you go into evening, you want to try to reduce your exposure to bright light. So if you're out and about, maybe wear sunglasses, even though it's, it's, uh, it's already getting a little dimmer. If you're using a lot of tablets, a lot of screens, reduce your screen time into the evening. There's been a lot of talk about the blue lights of LEDs uh, from your screens. And yes, <clears throat> there is some data to show that it can impact your um, cycle of natural melatonin that can help you sleep in the evenings. Probably the best thing to do is just reduce your screen time. If you are using screens in the evenings, tablets or laptops or things like that, try to not put them too close to your eyes. A lot of people uh, have them propped up when they're trying to go to bed and they're only 10 or 12 inches away. Try to keep them about 20 inches, maybe 24 inches away from your, your eyes to reduce some of the strain. And if you are gonna be using screens later in the evening, try to avoid using them too continuously. So try, so try to take uh, breaks. So every 20 minutes or so, if, you're, if you have to be on a screen, try to get up, look around, focus into the distance so you're avoiding some of that exposure. The other component is your wind down time. So when you're trying to sleep, try to have a, t a block of about 45 minutes or so that's winding down before your bedtime. And in that wind down period, try to avoid the screens completely. You can sit and read a book. You can even do some gentle stretches, maybe some yoga or meditation, uh, things like this that help you wind down, dimming the lights, quiet music, 
maybe reading a book, that kind of thing, or, or taking a warm bath that can contribute to your sleep. And then when you do go to bed, try to keep your room dark and cold. So you try to drop the temperature a couple of degrees from what you're used to during the daytime, and that can help. Try to keep your room, your bedroom dark so that you do go to bed and sleep. If you're having trouble even then, then you should just get up out of bed rather than lie in bed struggling with going to sleep. Get up out of bed and sit in a chair perhaps in a quiet area, read a book, a magazine, do a crossword puzzle, these kinds of things to try to get your cycle back into, uh, your mind back into sleep. The other component that's important for sleep is to try to go to bed and wake up at the same time for se uh, all seven days a week. Some people try to sleep in during the weekend and try to catch up on sleep on the weekend. That doesn't usually work very well. The ideal thing is that you're going to bed and you're getting up at the same time every day, no matter which day it is. And at that nighttime block, you're trying to give yourself seven to nine hours if you're an adult to sleep at night, an opportunity to sleep that long. If you sleep less than that, or data that shows that if you sleep five hours or less, uh, you start to go into deficiency, you start to increase your risk of other health problems, including overweight and obesity. So these are several little components that you can play into that, that impact your sleep. The other component in this is stress. If you feel very stressed in whatever you're engaged in, there's a whole thing on stress management that you can do. And I have other videos on, on stress management and there are other links that you can look up on, on what you can do about stress management as well as a component of sleep. As far as medications are concerned, you should try to really avoid prescription medications for sleep or reduce them if you're on them or try to manage with your physician to come off them if you can. Uh, again, these are things that you could discuss with your practitioner, your, your healthcare provider. Ideally, if you do these little components, many of you will be able to just fall into a routine, a sleep-wake cycle. That's the objective where you're getting natural, restorative sleep. So during the day, you feel energized and you feel like you can do what you need to do during the day in an active sense. These are components of lifestyle. That lifestyle can impact your health, your sense of well-being. If you like these kinds of videos, press subscribe, press the thumbs up, press the little bell. And until next time, I'm Dr. Nunez with Living Health. Thank you.